much I love you Never know how much I care When you put your arms around me I get a fever that's so hard to bear You give me fever In the morning Fever all through the night Fever mm, With your kisses Fever when you hold me Sunlights up the daytime, moonlights up the night. I light up when you call my name, and you know I'm gonna treat you right. You give me fever mm, in the morning, fever all through the night. Fever, oh, well, with your kisses, fever when you hold. Kalia's first solo EP, titled Kalia Ramu Sings Big Band, is available to stream on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash kalia-ramu. And now Kalia joins me live in the studio today. Thanks for being here, Kalia. Hey, thanks for having me. Are you inspired heavily by R&B singers? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. In what ways? Uh, just the big sound that they have, so that they're able to make that big sound. And a lot of it is also nostalgic. Uh, to me, I swear I was born, like, in a previous life. <laughs> I was in, you know, like, the 30s, 40s, 50s, grew up in that, because that is where, like, that music calls to me all all the time. Do you still prefer that music to the music that we have now? Um, I I don't know. I, it's, it's hard to say, because I haven't actually, I listen to old music a lot more than I listen to the new stuff. Right. Uh, there are a few bands that I do uh, enjoy, which we're going to play later. Um, but yeah, it's it's that old sound. I think partially the, the way they recorded it back then is also uh, part of what I love about it. How do you think um, the way of singing, how, how do you think singing has evolved over the years? Oh, that's a question I haven't <laughs> thought about. That's what we do uh, here. Yeah. Give the Open. hard questions. <laughs> Uh, no, that's good. Um, how does... Th- mm, I don't know. I think it's maybe gone a little bit backwards, especially with this, uh, with the whole autotune thing. And, you know, you for especially for recording artists, mainly for recording artists, you right. don't have to worry so much about being perfect uh, in pitch and in just because you can record it and re-record and edit it completely and change it to perfect it and um back then it was a tape machine right has so. it has it led to a dumbing down of skill um i'd say for some singers i i what I, about younger singers singers of your age um, do you think that uh they have to they have more things to fall back on yes mm-hmm. i think so um if I think it's a whole different thing now. I mean, probably back then uh, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, it also was like this. But um, there's definitely a difference between recording artist and performer now. Right. And I I like to do both, but I definitely prefer the performing aspect just because you get to see the audience react to it. And with music, uh, recorded music, you don't necessarily get to see that as, as much. Right. At least at first hand, you don't you don't get to experience their face and their. That's very true. Yeah. Speaking of connecting with the audience member, mm-hmm. how do you, how do you tell a story through your song? Um. It definitely helps when you like I, the way I write. I like writing about personal experiences and stuff. Such as. Um, you know, just feelings you've had, experiences that you've had in real life. Um, Can you give me an example of one that you used uh, recently? Yeah, sure. Um, well, the obvious, the breakup. <laughs> 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 and uh, interacting with that person after afterwards if you're in the same group of friends or, you know, just like having that piece of your life that hasn't fully gone out of your life because your circles are so close right um and so you take something that you have felt and try to put into a song that in a way that's relatable like that other people can relate to it do you feel as though you succeeded 
Uh, yes, I think so. In that, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you'd have to ask the listeners, <laughs> especially the the person you're writing it for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not so much for, more about, I guess. Right. <laughs> um, what what was the original question? How do you how do you tell? Uh, because, like, say Frank Sinatra, mm-hmm. right? I mean, when you talk about Frank, you talk uh, about his singing. Yeah. He always is able to tell some kind of story. Mm-hmm. Uh, convey a story with with the lyrics and the way he sings it. Yeah. So I've always been interested, especially as because you are a big band singer, how you're able to uh, tell the story in your own way. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing that I really um, love about jazz. For me personally, um, the music generally, even without lyrics, um, makes me feel a lot, and that's that's what I look in for, like for good music to me is stuff that makes me feel something and with the jazz I feel like the music itself tells the story um the melody itself and so adding the words onto that just kind of completes it and lets you exactly understand what what the story is telling right but um I that's like that's my favorite thing about performing the jazz stuff is that you you don't necessarily have to had experienced the story but it's just so for me. It's so easy to relate to it and express it because of the music. So, uh, you you have this folk duo, mm-hmm. Mermaid and the Bear, which you were very interested in talking about. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is is duo? I mean, you play with a guitarist, right? Mm-hmm. Or do you play any instruments yourself in the band? I not in the band. No. Um, is duo uh, because you talked about. Um, big band being this wave of sound backing you up yeah. and now you're stripped down you know it's it's bare bones mm-hmm. so how is that how does that compare to what you are used to it's completely different obviously but um that's an, that's something that i really loved uh, when we started doing it is that just it's something completely new to me right um he sings as well but a lot of the time when we sing together it's not uh, in harmony, it's in unison, just uh, an octave away. And so just like the, the bear, it's knowing how to use the, that emptiness in a good way. And uh, I, I love it. It's such a contrast and it's really um, a different experience. Right. And do you guys do, have you done a lot of performances with that? Yeah, with that yeah. Band? And what's the, what's the difference between... Uh, singing duo in an intimate atmosphere you know say like a bar as opposed to having uh, more players back you up Mm. it's i think that the duo stuff in a bar is not as effective and not as fun for me um because well like unless everyone there is has come to see you personally and like you know you can they're there for the music but a lot of the time in this kind of thing, it's more of a rehearsal performance because at bars, there's also a lot of people that come that don't know the band and, you know, just people that pass pass by and hear music and want to come in or people that are just, you know, sitting at the bar. But right. um, we've had a lot of those experiences, especially just becoming a band about a year ago um, where you're just kind of getting gigs for the sake of performing and practicing that because it's so different from rehearsing on your own. Right. Um, and so the, the atmosphere is very different. I, I really love, um, the first time we played was actually at Burdock Music Hall, uh, downtown right. Toronto. And it, the vibe there is perfect for our music, I think, because it's a place where they have a bar side and then they have the other side, which is a music hall. And you go there specifically for the show. And, there's chairs or um, and a small stage, and it, the sound is always incredible there, and um, it's just a perfect atmosphere for it because you right. can you can really the sound just vibes in the whole room and and it fills up the atmosphere and um, you're really telling stories there. And yeah. people are listening and you know soaking it up. And I'm walk down the street and I see your face. I wanna walk away. Walk away, I ride on the bus and see the back of your head Get up and walk away, walk away I want you out of my brain You're in my 
my dreams until the break of dawn Then when I'm wide awake You're always hanging around But da 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 Well, they say, they say, 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 they tell me that love fades to gray But it don't wash away talking to you don't it feel so strange i'm left in disarray with nothing to say my story has turned to a different page you don't belong in this place oh how our lives interchange our rivers flow into the same ocean bay although my mind has been made you're always floating around but da 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 Well, they say, they say, 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 say They tell me that love fades to gray But it don't wash away They say, oh, oh They say They say, they tell me the love fades to gray, but it don't wash away. Are you ever unprepared for a gig? <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, there are those gigs sometimes. Um, but I generally try not to, to, I try to be prepared. I, I think rehearsal is one of the most important things for, for musicians. Right. It's, especially if it's a, the bigger the group, the more you just have to figure out each person's vibe and, you know, work together. With uh, my my larger band, the Nightbird Band, yeah. we we've been playing together for maybe two years, I think, and I think our sound is just it's gotten so good together because we know what to expect and we can play around with each other and you know it's not unexpected. We know uh, kind of where someone's going or you know we know how to play around the music with each other. And right. It just like it flows together so well. Speaking of growth as a band, how how have you improved as a musician over the years? Have you how have you matured? Yeah, um, singing Motown. <laughs> that is really the <laughs> the thing. You've learned to sing Motown over time, or has well, like, singing Motown improved other other singing things? Singing Motown has definitely improved my overall uh, voice. I think it's shown me things that I haven't been able to. Like, I never knew I could do. Like what? Uh, well, belting, for one. <laughs> um, and it, it brings out a whole different side of your voice, I think. Um, personally, at least. And uh, I really uh, connect with that music style. So Right. But. Singing, you know, Motown or singing in a big band, um, you have to have a certain stage presence. Mm -hmm. w was that taught? Did you learn that? Um... Thinking back to Humber, well, I I started performing. My first ever band was a big band uh, when I was twelve, right. and I joined this uh, community big band nonprofit uh, organization, and uh, they're called the Sheraton Cadwell Orchestra. Yeah, I played in that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't by any means something that was, um, you know, it, it was something like a training for me like it was kind of like boot camp because I would go and sing in front of you know big crowds of people I was just developing my vocal skills at the time and it, I think that was the first thing that really got me got me knowing that I want to be a, a singer right and, and then stage presence how did you yeah the stage presence come was, around to that I was gonna <laughs> get there <laughs> right. um 
<laughs> no mean to rush you. <laughs> <laughs> the stage presence the aspect of that was so big because you're on a stage backed up by a huge band and a huge sound, and you have to some like you can't blend into it. You have to front it, right? Um, which, at a young age, I was a super shy person, and that really started getting me out of my box. And um, how did you over, how did you overcome it by doing it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That like just I wouldn't say forcing because it's not. It wasn't. That's a little bit of a harsh word for what I'm trying to say, but um, it really got me got me exposed to that and um, opened open myself a little bit do you feel like opening yourself on stage has contributed to uh opening yourself you know like as a person and Um, being becoming less shy off stage yeah definitely yeah also the aspect of um speaking to a crowd after the show because people really love to be able to you know come up to you after the show and get to know you a little or you know ask you about your projects and um that was a big thing I started learning more when I joined the Toronto Ulster Big Band because right. we would almost after every show we would go out and do a meet and greet and you would talk to everyone and, you know, show them that you're human too. <laughs> uh, not this godly uh, singer. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> you know? do you think that's what they think of you? <laughs> well, you know, when you're at a, sh- like, a show and you see this person that is like doing something that you can't do, it's right. often very like wowing <laughs> yeah for the lack of a better word and um it's definitely still how i feel when i go to shows and i go see people that i i really love and being able to actually talk to them makes it a whole different thing i think i think it's very beneficial for musicians to to go out after a show and and greet the people and what do do audience members like to ask you about um, first of all, usually it's how old I am. <laughs> At least when I was a bit younger. Do they get it right? <laughs> no, they usually get older. All right. But I think that's just because my voice is a little low. That's true. Um, and, uh, I, I got, I often got my voice, uh, people would say like, oh, it sounds so mature from a younger age. Um, that's probably because I was listening to, you know, like Sarah Vaughn and, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all those deep voices at a young age. So it kind of brought that out in me. Yeah. I want to go back to what you said about your self-perception yeah. as like godly on stage. <laughs> well, maybe I wasn't talking about myself <laughs> necessarily, but you know, that's what I think when I go see a show and sure. you know, this person that I admire so much is singing and they sound amazing. And it's just like, that is music is my religion. So, 